My name is Vanessa Nakangu Namwanga. Most people call me Vanessa Namwanga, and I'm a 400 meter runner representing the Netherlands. Um, well, I was inspired to take up running from my brother, and he was doing athletics. And considering I was a tomboy, I wasn't really a girly girl. I didn't like wearing skirts or makeup or anything like that. I wanted to be like him, so um, we went to I went to the local track where he was training, and I just joined along. Um, I was 10 years old, and um, from then on, I've never looked back. I'm still Uganda, still from the sun, African woman. Yes, that I am, I'm still Uganda. Um, I think I was mainly inspired by the Sydney Olympics when I saw Marion Jones win five gold medals. And I just looked at her and I thought I'd love to one day be like her. So as you can see, there's other things that are Ugandans out there doing. Now you're gonna treat this any change to come and know fashion designers to give a yimbi. Aba yimbi was so say never fashion designer to turn so well. But today I give you a new new fresh talent. Mwala omita Vanessa Nak na muanga na kangu and she's an athlete. So on our show we welcome Vanessa. Thank you. It's very lovely having you on our show actually. We are so delighted to have you. So Vanessa, uh, talk me through the 400 meters. Okay, so the 400 meters is a long endurance sprint, that's how I would put it. Because um, you need endurance and you need speed for the 400 meters. Um, it's one of, I think it's one of the hardest events because with, within the 400 meters you're guaranteed lactic whether you start off fast or whether you start off slow so our coach always teaches us just to go off hard from the beginning because in the last 50 meters you, lactic hits you regardless. What was your first race like? I remember my first race I was 11 years old I did the 60 meters and I didn't even have any spikes and um, there was this girl there she was like the Dutch champion at the, at the time and she had like two pairs of Nike spikes and then I had made the final and her mom said to her, said like oh you can you can use her spikes and I was so honored like I'd never seen spikes before well I seen them on TV and I put them on and then I beat her and I remember she was so annoyed and you know yeah, that's yeah. when I knew that I could. I, I, okay, wait. I don't want to pretend that I know what you're talking about about spikes. Okay. What are spikes? So basically, spikes are. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what spikes are. Okay, so <laughs> spikes like the shoes. Yeah, spikes are the running shoes. They're really, really light, and they've got like small spikes underneath, like these uh. little iron. You so you learn, I, well I've learned that, I learn something new every day I guess. You've got different spikes for different events, so um, the sprint spikes are usually the more lighter ones. Um, the spikes for long distance runners usually require more support and you know, you've got spikes for, you know. You know but I'm sure things. now you own loads of spikes, right? What makes you say that? I mean, because you're, you're into this thing now, you're, you're running. Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple. Usually every season obviously you get new ones. So. Yeah, okay. So, how much training do you have to do? Do you only train like on a weekend? I train five days a week um, oh. because I'm at uni. It, it was six days a week before, but I train five days a week. Um, it looks quite difficult what you do. It's very interesting. five days a week. Yeah, five. And you're a student. Yeah, I'm at I'm at uni. I'm in my second year doing biomedical science. So you train every every. Every five days a week, you train five. You train five days a week. Correct. Um, talk me through exactly what you do when you wake up in the morning. You, you know, you, you catch a bus, you catch a train. What, what are the first steps that you do in training? Obviously, uh, what well, as far as I know, you just stretch, and then, <laughs> and then you start running. <laughs> you know, so maybe there's in detail. Tell us a bit more about how you, how you start training. Okay, so on Mondays I go to lectures first. Lectures are usually from nine till about. Three. I go and eat and then I go to the track. Um, on Mondays and Wednesdays I train in Mylands, Mylands Stadium, so we train there in the evenings. That's, those are our running sessions, so running sessions on the track. On Tuesdays and Thursdays I train at Bee Valley. I usually go there either before you or Alright, this place is all quite far for you. Yeah, because I'm from South London, but you know the journey is worth it. That's where my coach is based, and that's where my training partners are based. Mm -hmm. So you know, I have no choice but to make that journey. I guess if you're quite passionate about something, it, the journey doesn't even really matter. No, I don't even. I'm so used to it. I'm so used to it. Yeah. So yeah. So our training consists of you know sometimes long runs, sometimes short runs. 
gym. That's I think that's the main thing that we've been working on. Um, remember when you came to watch me when I was training, mm -hmm. and my coach explained to you that our aim for this season is really to get me strong with my upper body. So I do spend a lot of time in the gym. What a, a I think most athletes would think, okay, I've got the talent. This I, I run, and you know, this I should be able to get enough money from this. Do you really have to still study, or? Uh, yes, but at the same time, I'm not doing it for the love of money. I'm doing it because I do something that I enjoy. I love going to the track and going through the pain of going into the gym and the being tired. Well, right? Yeah, I love the competition, I love the travelling bit of it. I just do something, this is this is me. I, if I don't train, I feel sick, you know? It's not like an addiction, but it's part of me, you know? And I think an education is so important. And I think the person that told me that the most was my dad. My dad used to think, oh, you know, so maybe Tabo. Oh, don't think time. about it. This running is going to take a moment, you know, well, you know, summer. And on top of that, I have a cousin called Aya. She's called Aya Manchitanda, and she's a swimmer. She's a Ugandan record holder. And she went to the Beijing Olympics wow. and to 2008. This athlete thing runs in your family, then, It I runs guess. in the blood, I guess. Yeah. So um, she held the flag for Uganda, and when she was at the Beijing Olympics, she was at her last year at medical school. So my dad used to tell me all the time, if your cousin Aya can go to the Olympics and she can become a doctor, you have no excuse. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and your you coach as well. You heard, yeah, you yeah. met my coach, and my coach says that education comes before track and field anytime. So academics, just in case you break your leg actually, or bruise yourself or something, right? Exactly, yeah. So who's your sporting idol? Is your coach one of them? I mean, my, my coach is like my second, is a second dad to me. <laughs> Seriously, he treats us like his own. I mean, I hate him most of the time. Because of the, the training. training. But yeah. I love him at the yeah. same time, because, uh, you know, because he wants the best out of us. But my sporting hero or idol, I would say, is Christina Hurugu. Um She's a current 400 Olympic champion, and not only that, I train with her, so we have oh, the same wow. coach. So to have to, to be able to train with someone that has achieved so much and is so humble and God-fearing, and she's so down-to-earth, you know, there's no discrimination, everyone gets treated Yeah, like, you, you still know? train with her yeah. as well, and she's not very... I really, Christina Hurugu. Yeah? She's definitely. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So what do you think about... Um, you were speaking about your cousin there, the swimmer. Yes. What do you think the relation with um, Ugandans and athletes, or well, athletics in general? I'm sure there's other athletes out there that are Ugandan, but how come Ugandans don't know anything about them? I think most people don't really focus on track and field too much. I think most people focus on, like you said earlier, the music, you know, most people music, if you're a football player, but mm. athletics kind of... It's, well, I don't know, people don't really focus on that too much. Yeah, if you're a Commonwealth champion like Moisef Kipsiro, they'll know you, you know, mm. Dorcas in Zikuru, but other people don't really focus on that. Yeah. They focus more on football. If us Ugandans are not aware that we have athletes in this country, we have such talent in this country, or even outside the country, even within our own countries in Uganda, how, how would they receive our support? We really need to start looking into other talents and try and support our sisters and brothers. What is it like? Do you actually go out there and say, well, I'm Ugandan, I'm an athlete, hey, hey. Or is it just completely a silent killer? No, I'm very proud to be Ugandan. Even because in Uganda, I'm very open about that. About my athletics, I kind of keep it as a low profile. I think if you get to know me, you'll know that I'm an athlete. Eventually, but I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't, that's not the first thing I'd ever tell anyone that yeah. I'm an athlete. Um, support wise, like I said, most people focus more on football, they focus more on, um, you know, the music, like you said, like you, I, I know that, you know, UK based artists get a lot of support and stuff like that, because yeah. people like them, but um, like they don't really focus on athletics too much. And that's why I'm really happy that, you know, shows like yours, you know, exist so that more people can get more exposure about other Ugandans, you know, especially what, what during the sport. Yeah, the sports, sports. thing. You get to know us, so yeah, I'm very So happy. will we be expecting you at the 2012? I think that's the... I've heard this question... I've been hearing this question for about the last five years. But you're good, you're, you're a good athlete. We've seen you in training and, yes. you know, we wish you nothing but the best. So hopefully you you, sh you should be among them, right? If it's God's will, definitely. I just, fingers crossed, just pray for me. I, I think with athletics, you know, people have been asking me for the last couple, are you going to be in the 2012 Olympics? Are you going to go? I don't know, with athletics you don't know until the actual year 2012, do you understand what I mean? Oh, because so you have to run the qualifying time, you have to be in the top three, you have to be fit. 
if training goes really well and I'm injury free, then and I train hard, work with my coach, listen to him, I'm sure things will go well. But I'm not going to say I'm definitely going to be in the 2012 Olympics, yeah. but it's something to So aim this at. is a journey. It's a journey, yeah. yeah. And if not 2012, 2016. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I'm really, I'm proud of you. Did <laughs> Don't ask me, I can't be doing stuff. I don't know that. <laughs> oh, okay, dear, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my, my, my clan, I'm from the Njaza clan. Uh -huh. um, Njaza looks like an antelope. Um, most of us, we originated from Busoga, and the head of our clan is called Chitanda. Oh, see, see, I know. I know. You're see, quite knowledgeable. I, I, I thought I thought yeah. I got you. I thought that. Oh, let me get her here. She won't know what she's doing. I know. I know. That's great. I'm glad that you know you're about your clan and what's. I'm proud of anyone that's proud of being Ugandan and shows it off well. What do you eat as well? What do you eat to keep fit? Because there's people out there like me. I wouldn't go and run or or go to the gym, but I mean, I would want to to look healthy as you. I eat a lot of my okay? <laughs> I eat matoke. Matoke. Yeah, matoke. I said that's the best diet. Oh, right? It's just the best. Yeah, it's the best. Because you don't really put on weight from matoke. matoke I eat yeah. a lot of rice, vegetables. Yes, yeah, so, because you, know? you need carbs, right? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. One one form of advice that I would give is to work hard, but education always comes first. Even with me, when I have assignments, when I have exams, I do not train. I stay at home and revise it. So it's so education is so important. It's something that you can always fall back on. Yeah. What is it like having to juggle all these these things? You know, you're 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 a student, you're an athlete, and I suppose you have an, a, a job as well, right? So how do you manage to juggle all these things together? How how do you manage to put everything together? I think it's a it's a, lot, it's a commitment and time management skills. I mean. Um, it's tough, but it's it's manageable. Um, yeah. I basically don't have a lot of free time. Sunday is my day off, and that is my day to sleep, stay home, go to church sometimes, stay home with my little brother Cedric, Aww. just relax. Is your little brother uh, inspired by you as well? Is, is he also going into athletes or? Well, he, he he's much faster than I was when I was when I was his age, age. So, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. If I wouldn't did. be surprised. <laughs> Being an athlete allows you to travel to these other countries for competitions, right? Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the countries you liked or disliked? Well, I think it, to be honest, like I like the Czech Republic mm -hmm. mainly because the people are really friendly and we had a great time going there. Mm -hmm. Place I dislike the most has to be Russia. But like like you said, with any sport, if, you know, you're you're fortunate to travel mm -hmm. not just to other cities, like in, within the UK, but you get to travel to other countries as well. Now, the the next trip that I'm taking is we're going to God willing, if everything goes well, we're going to um, to California in April. Um, I'm going to spend three weeks there. It's just warm weather training, so it's I don't have to f f worry about uni. So that does um, the weather in England does affect your training as well. Then do you train you train outside or you train indoors? Both, both. both. So within the winter, within the winter when there's snow, yes, we are outside. My goodness! But sometimes we do train this, indoors. This athlete thing would be a very impossible thing for me, completely. I, Why? Training in winter. Why? Yeah, Are but you mad? if you're determined, come on. <laughs> Apart from being an athlete, um, I understand you're also a model. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, that mainly started off when I did Miss East Africa and I represented Uganda. Um, I was crowned Miss Popularity, and wow. after that, I kind of got into modelling. I am currently signed to Mahogany Model Management, but I mainly do my own stuff, like. They more want me to go into the glamour side of it, and that's not really what I'm into. I think mm -hmm. I would more want to develop as a sports sports model work rather than catalogue and like mm -hmm. ca catwalking. Okay, have you? But you have done catwalk modeling. Yeah, I have well. done. I have done it before. Yeah, because you're quite tall. Yeah, I'm fortunate to be five foot ten and size eight. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen often. To be, to be honest, I've never been a girly girl from when I was younger. Even now, like, I force, not really force myself, but I have to make the effort to want to put on a dress. Yeah. Or, I'm not like my sister. I have one older sister and she's mm -hmm. into a whole... Dressing up. Yeah. 
you know. So you, you, does she also, is she one of the people you look up to when you're getting dressed or doing makeup? And I think, yeah, my hair. sister, my sister has very good, had your ups, my sister's name. She has very, very good sense of style and uh -huh. stuff. She, she's really good at that stuff. So your older brother is the main guy for... When it, got, the athletes, when it got to sports, yes, yes, but I have my older brother, and then I have one younger brother, Cedric, mm -hmm. and he's seven. He loves running. I'm sure he, he'll one day even be faster than me. Who are your favourite artists in Uganda, musician, favourite artists? Well, I've got one favourite, I like, I've worked here in the UK, or both? Both, both. I like MC Mose, because right. um, MC Mose is actually known in Uganda. Oh well, really? Yeah. Cause you just come I back, just came right? back from Uganda. I came back last month. So I saw MC. I like his song Naluluji. I was actually in the video. I just oh, you're in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I like we we's on radio. I like Juliana, Irina Mubiru. See, I know all of them. You know Eddie Kenzo, G N L Zamba. G N L Zamba. Um, it was, I I saw some pictures of you with G N L Zamba actually. Um, really? Okay. I see you've been doing your research. <laughs> There a spark? No, we were just hanging out. Just hanging yeah. out. Okay, well that clears it. Then, with the 2012 event coming up, which country would you be representing? Would it be um, Britain or Uganda? Actually neither, because I don't have a Ugandan passport, I don't have a British passport. Actually, I have a Dutch, a Dutch passport. So they, 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 it actually depends on which passport you hold? Yeah, definitely. So you have a Dutch passport? I have a Dutch passport. How, how, how did that happen? Tell me that story. Well, my mum left Uganda in the early 80s and went to Holland. Mm. And so that's where I was born and raised my, with my brother and my sister. So you're Dutch? I'm Dutch. But still Uganda, and cousin Ghana, obviously. But yeah, but you've done a great job to be that into a chance of just local girl Uganda, a chance of and you yeah. still have passion to go back home. Most young people that have been born outside of Uganda I don't think really have. I mean, they do have a passion of coming back home, but since you want to know, but you know, Uganda or their own culture. For me, I think you know your origin is very important. I will always be Dutch of Ugandan origin. I'll really never good. just be Dutch. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So it's very. Important. I'll always be seen as Dutch of Ugandan origin. I'll never just be Dutch. So I'm very proud of my Ugandan heritage. I actually went to Uganda last month. Mm -hmm. And had a nice time in the village, in the Jaja Wange. Oh, tell me, what do you have to be fair to you in Uganda? Mkampala. Mm, Mkampala. Um, Club Cayenne, Club Rouge, Club, Club D1, Okriya Mere, Gendole Pilao, Muhuru. Uhuru. I love Uhuru, they have the best Pilao, it's really cheap. Uh, Luwombos. Luwombo go to, where from? Luwombo go to Echitobelo. I don't know, I don't know where it goes, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. Correct. So you're representing the Netherlands, so not Ugandan. How, how, how do you think Uganda can maybe improve on supporting their athletes? Well, this was two weeks ago, I read in the newspaper, because I always keep updated about, you know, what other Ugandans are doing and stuff. And um, there's an article about Dorcas in Zukuru now. Dorcas in Zukuru was the world champion um, over... 3,000 meter steeplechase in 2005 mm -hmm. and she was pleading for the U uh, for the Ugandan government to give her ten thousand dollars so she could um, come to come to the UK and pursue her training with all the facilities and everything and the coaching and stuff like that mm -hmm. so I think there's a whole scandal of them not being able to fund her and stuff like that so I think you know if you know, you, I don't know, maybe the Ugandan government could help athletes to, you know, to financially support them. I think a lot more athletes will come out of Ugandan and be successful like the Kenyans. Look, at, you saw the place, you saw where I trained, the nice facilities. I just it's go there lovely. for free. I just yeah. go there for free and do what I'm doing. Sometimes I don't even feel like going there, you know. Yet there's someone in Uganda who's struggling. Struggling. And yet it's way more talented than I am. And they're struggling to to get in to to even have the the, the right time it's to train sad, and the right yeah. things to train. It's very sad. Yeah. I reckon maybe even if it's not financially supporting them, but at least have trying to have means or facility as well. If, yeah, I mean, they can train. Def yeah, definitely. I think you know they have the Nelson Mandela Stadium, but 
I think, you know, funds are really, it's really, really vital. Even me living here, you know, it's it's really important to have a support. Even if they have, like, I don't know, sponsors from outside of yeah. that support Ugandan athletes back home, that would be great. It would be great, yeah. yeah. You, you could be the, the main person to do this thing. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I am. I have a sports person. I have got this idea. I can't discuss it with you yet, but there, I have got something mm. I'm thinking about. That's yeah. great. What are the other aims for this season that you have? Um, to go to the European Under-23 Championships in the Czech Republic and on Strava. So mm. that's what we're really aiming for at the moment. So that's what we've been working on. So in April, I'll be going to America for three weeks and doing my warm weather training there. In June, I'll have to go to, back to Holland and go for the trials. Um, I have to obviously come in the top three and I have to run a qualifying time and then I'll book my place to go to European on the 23 championships. You're so busy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> You're such a busy lady. I am. All year three, your year's pretty much planned out and you have no time for Uganda this year. I just came <laughs> back. You just, just came I just, back. I just came back. Do you reckon Uganda. they will take you to Uganda for training? Just because um, of the whole country issue. How, in what sense? Because, I mean, they're taking me to LA for training. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Do you think they would, they, would they take you to any African countries for training? If the facilities were there, why not? You know, if... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no facilities. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, let me say that. No, the reason... So the reason being why we don't go to Africa is because in LA, you know, all the facilities, um, the competi we also compete then whilst we're training, so it's not just strictly training, training yeah. but on the weekends we do have competitions as well, and obviously you want to compete against the best, so then the Americans are really dominating, the Americans and the Jamaicans, so that's mm. the reason why we're going up there. Well, the Jamaicans will be there. Okay, so the British sprinters will be there. Oh wow, fantastic. I believe if you have a dream, you should really just follow your heart work hard at it don't let anyone tell you you can't do something and don't listen to negativity just hard work is so important it doesn't come naturally even with me i just have to remain focused i have my coach that has to remind me every single day every every training session he reminds me of of the of the aim you know it's hard but just stay focused just look at look at the future and it's so important to get have an education Never give up on education.